Warning, incoming goblin. Warning, incoming game. You get it, it's, it's a reboot reference. This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site-wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic goblin gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game finds Tim, Corwin, and Justin rejoining me. Tim, the master of Mardu, is playing his Alesha deck, keeping War Priest of Thun, Karmic Guide, Phyrexian Arena, Faithless Looting, Self First Springs, Vault of the Archangel, and a Nomad Outpost. Corwin is playing his Rowan deck, keeping Swamp, Profane Command, Brand, Prismatic Vista, Volcanic Vision, Hall of the Bandit Lord, and a Cabal Coffers. Justin is playing Jalira, keeping an Icebreaker Kraken, a Reform, Sky Diamond, and Four Islands. I am playing my newly made Ham Vashar deck, keeping Agent of Treachery, two Islands, two Plains, Reliquary Tower, and an Arakoa Sneak. Tim wins a die roll and starts us off. He draws, playing and tap Nomad Outpost. I just play an Island. Corwin draws and plays a tapped Hall of the Bandit Lord. Justin just draws and plays an island. Tim's got a self for springs and passes. I play a seat of the Synod and pass to Corwin. Corwin plays a mountain, passing. Justin playing an island, taps two for a sky diamond and passes back to Tim. Tim's turn has a Vault of the Archangel coming in and he pays two black and one colorless for a Phyrexian Arena. My turn has me drawing, playing a planes, and casting my commander, Hama Bashar. Corwin just draws and plays a swamp. Tim's got an island and casts his commander, bringing out Jalira. Tim draws from the arena, losing one and for turn. He then plays a mountain and casts his commander, Alesha. Once she's out, he plays Faithless Looting, drawing two and discarding two. I've got a Reliquary Tower for turn, and I cast the Arrow Crow Sneak, gaining the initiative, and as I enter the Undercity, go and find a basic land to put to hand twice thanks to Hamma Bashar. I pass after that. Corwin draws and plays Prismatic Vista, passing. Justin's got an Island for turn, and then casts Reform. Tim loses one to the Arena and draws and draws for turn. He then plays Tortured Existence. He plays a tapped Rakdos Carnarium, bouncing a land back to his hand, and then casts Imperial Recruiter, which as it enters, grabs Gaunti. He passes once he's done finding him. On my upkeep, I continue through the Undercity, putting four plus one plus one counters onto my sneak, and then draw for turn. I play a Plains, and cast Virtue of Knowledge, passing to Corwin. Corwin draws and plays a Mountain. He plays out a Dockside Extortionist, making a bunch of treasures, and passing to Justin after that. Justin draws and plays an Island. He plays Swiftfoot Boots and equips them onto his commander, and then activates her, sacrificing the Reef Worm and revealing off the top until he hits a Scourge of the Fleets. Every creature his opponent controls that has Toughness 5 or less gets bounced back to their hand, and with nothing else, he passes. Tim draws, losing one from the arena, and then for turn, and then plays the Nomad Outpost again. He then casts a Cathartic Reunion, and he follows up after drawing with the Imperial Recruiter that we'd seen before. As it enters, he goes to find Kiki Jiki to put to hand, and passes. I continue to the next room in the Undercity, having Justin lose five, and then draw for turn. I play an island, and then play Seasoned Dungeoneer, which triggers twice as it enters, thanks to the Virtue. I get to draw a card, and then reveal my top 10 as I finish the dungeon, and I get a Glass Pool Mimic, which comes in as a copy of the Seasoned Dungeoneer. This has me gaining the initiative twice more, and I get to get a basic, and then scry two, and pass my turn. Corwin draws and plays Ancient Tomb, and then replays the Dockside Extortionist, making more treasures. He follows up by cracking the Vista, and then casting Rowan by tapping the Hull of the Bandit Lord, and loses some life. He then activates the Ancient Tomb for two colorless, and takes two, and then plays out Necropotence. 
He dumps 6 life into Necro, and exiles his top 6 card to put to hand at the end of turn. Once that's done, he activates Rowan to reduce his black and red spells by 12 colorless. This then lets him play a Profane Command where X is 14 to deal 14 to me and kill the Scourge of the Fleets. He then pays 2 red for Volcanic Vision, returning the Profane Command to his hand and dealing 2 to each of his opponent's creatures. Corwin then wraps things up by using his last 2 treasures to once more cast the Profane Command again, dealing 14 to Justin and killing my seasoned Dungeoneer. After that, Corwin moves to his end step, putting the 6 cards to hand from Necropotence and passes to Justin. Justin draws and plays an island. He activates Jalira and turns one of his tokens into a Pathracer of Ulamog after revealing off the top. He follows up by casting Polymorph and targets his other token, and this time flips into an Ancient Stone Idol. With a bunch of big creatures on the board, he passes to Tim after that. Tim draws from the arena, losing one, and then for turn, and plays a Spectator seating in his main phase. He then plays a Soul Ring, and discards Gaunti to the Tortured Existence, bringing back the Warpriest of Thune to his hand. He then casts the Warpriest, and as it comes in, destroys the Necropotence and passes to me. As I move through the Undercity, I get a Treasure Token and then draw for turn. I play a Plains and cast my own Soul Ring. I then play a Clever Impersonator and have it come in as a copy of the Dockside Extortionist, making 12 Treasure Tokens from my two End of the Battlefield triggers. I then use some of them to recast Hamma Pashar. Once she's out, I then replay the Arakroa Sneak and get the initiative twice, making two skeleton tokens and then getting two of the final room triggers. The first one has me getting a Soul Herder, and then a Restoration Angel off the other one, which as it enters, gets me two blink triggers, and I target the Sneak and Clever Impersonator. The Impersonator comes back in as a copy of the Virtue of Knowledge, and the Sneak re-enters, getting me three initiative triggers as it comes in. This has me restarting the whole dungeon, and I get two basics, get to put four plus one plus one counters onto my Glass Pool Mimic, and then deal ten, which I unfortunately miss. I follow that up with an Agent of Treachery, and I get to steal three permanents, taking Rowan, the Pathraiser of Ulamog, and the Tortured Existence. Moving to my end step, I then draw three cards from the Agent of Treachery, and then blink it with a Soul Herder, and as it re-enters, steal a Mountain, the Kraken Token, and a Soul Ring. Corwin draws and plays Luxury Suite. He then plays Anti Blythe and activates the Ancient Tome to put two plus one plus one counters onto her, and then casts Lightning Greaves with the mana. He moves the Greaves onto Blight and passes to Justin. Justin draws, playing Aqueous Form on the Ancient Stone Idol, and then moves to combat. He swings it at me, and since I can't block, I take the hit after he scries one. With nothing else, he passes to Tim. Tim loses one to the arena, and then draws for turn. He's not done drawing as he flashes back Faithless Looting, drawing two and discarding two. He then plays Smoldering Marsh, and casts a Dusk. Corwin responds by activating Blight to deal two damage to the Warpriest, and Justin also responds by sacrificing the Stone Idol to Jalira. This has him flipping into an Arcane Artisan, and Dust then resolves, wiping the board. With nothing else, Tim passes to me. I still have the initiative, and I move rooms, I draw two, and I then draw for turn. I then sacrifice a treasure to activate my tortured existence, discarding an Archaeomancer to bring back the Restoration Angel. I cast the Restoration Angel, and get to flicker my Sneak, Agent, and Hamma Bashar and the Agent comes back and steals a Lightning Greaves, Arcane Artisan, and Imperial Recruiter. I also get to go into the initiative three more times, completing the dungeon, and of my top ten, I decide to keep a Radiant Solar. I then resolve my second final dungeon trigger from the Undercity, and this time around I hit Sarah Emissary. With it coming in, I name creatures, and I also rip through the Lost Mine of Phandelver, finishing it thanks to all the Venture triggers and Initiative triggers. I then move the Lightning Greaves to the Sarah Emissary, and I move to combat. I swing the Emissary at Corrin for 10. He takes the hit, and after combat, I move my Greaves onto the Stolen Arcane Artisan and pass to Corwin. Corwin draws and plays Smoldering Marsh. He activates the Ancient Tomb to lose two and make two colorless, and then plays a Black Sun Zenith. I respond by activating the Artisan, 
discarding a Diluvian Primordial, which I make a token copy of, and get three triggers of its Enter the Battlefield trigger. I get to play Volcanic Visions, Polymorph, and Cathartic Reunion from the first one. This has me discarding two, and then drawing three, and I then Polymorph my Sneak and flip into an Eccentric Apprentice. This lets me venture three times, and as I move back into the Lost Dungeon of Phandelver, I'm able to go into the Dark Pool Room, which takes out Corwin, which effectively counters the Black Sun Zenith. My other Primordial Triggers have nothing to hit though, and with nothing else, we move to Justin's turn. Justin draws and plays an Academy Ruins, and then activates Jalira. He hits an Ulamog's Crusher, and then casts Ring of Valkus, moving it onto the Crusher. Going to combat, he swings the Crusher at me, and I sacrifice two treasure tokens to the Annihilator trigger, and then block with the Eccentric Apprentice as it has protection from creatures. After that, Justin passes. Tim loses one to Arena and draws. He then draws for turn and plays an Isolated Chapel. He casts a Boros Signet and passes, keeping a bunch of mana open. I finish the Lost Might of Phandelver, moving to the last room which lets me draw a card, which actually draws me two cards because Ham of Bashar is out. I play a Mind Stone and pay the one to sacrifice it, drawing another card. And then cast Karmic Guide, which reanimates the Sneak, Archaeomancer, and Glasspool Mimic. I get a total of 12 Venture Triggers and 3 Initiative Triggers. I get a bunch of Venture Triggers and 3 Initiative Triggers, and I resolve it so that I go back into the Undercity before resolving the Venture Triggers, which lets me get to go and find 2 Basics, put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto my Emissary, deal 10 to Justin, draw 2 cards, and flip into Tomb of Horrors Adventurer, which then runs me through the dungeon again. I get 2 more Basics, put 4 counters onto my Commander, and attempt to kill Justin with the Dark Pool. Tim responds though with a timely Everybody Lives to save him this turn. I then crack my treasures to help cast Sun Titan. As it comes in, I get to bring back the Soul Herder, a Plains, and a Mind Stone. I then crack the Mind Stone again to draw a card. I move to my end step, and I flicker the Agent of Treachery, stealing Academy Ruins, Rakdos Carnarium, and Phyrexian Arena, and then drawing three from the Agent's second ability and pass to Justin. Justin draws and polymorphs the Ulamog's Crusher, revealing until he hits a Void Winnower. He then moves the ring onto it and passes to Tim. Tim draws and casts Zulaport Cutthroat, and then passes. During his end step, I activate the stolen Arcane Artisan, discarding Avacyn to make a token copy of it. I draw, and with a massive board of indestructible creatures that also have protection from creatures, I'm able to swing out and kill both Justin and Tim to win the game. Game review time. This game was 1 hour, 18 minutes, and 56 seconds, and probably most of that was me going through dungeons. Hem Pashar is awesome, and getting two of the triggers every room is great, but my goodness does it add up on time. Couple that with the fact that my ETB triggers were doubled or triples at some point, and the Radiant Solar made things even more complicated by adding Venture instead of going to the initiative, and things got a bit complicated by late game. I had a lot of fun playing the deck though, so that's not going to stop me from doing it again in the future, but I hope to refine it a little bit more, and maybe even take out the Solar. I think Tim put it very well after the game ended, and that's with Rowan being on the table, you always have to be mindful of it. She's so easy to just kind of pop off, and the fact that Corwin's quote-unquote do-nothing turn with the two profane commands where 28 life was lost is a small turn for him, speaks volumes to how powerful the deck can be. Justin got to spin the wheel a lot with Jalira, and it was funny to see that she stuck around despite all of his giant Eldrazi's getting taken out when Dusk resolved. Other than that, it seemed like he wasn't able to do very much outside of just play lands and hopefully hit relevant creatures. Tim's Alesha deck did not function as he'd hoped, I think. The double Imperial Recruiters was certainly good, and finding Kiki Jiki had me really worried. Thankfully the Sarah Emissary really stopped I think any kind of issues that I might have had with the Kiki Jiki, as those colors typically run combos like Zealous Conscripts and Kiki Jiki or other things. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.